Hello, everyone. Welcome to Coffee Break. It's Steve Barrett here, the Editorial Director of PR Week. Delighted to be looking at comms tech this week with uh, the CEO of Meltwater, John Box, who's a 15-year veteran of the com company and can really give us a perspective on a very hot sector and what a sector that's really um, gained in interest and significance for PR professionals across the board. So, John, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Yeah, hi Steve. Very much appreciate the uh, the intro there, and delighted to be here and digging a little bit more to this space. Yeah, and as we can hear, you are a fellow Brit, so we're two Brits in New York. I think you're in Manhattan in the office. I'm in Brooklyn in my home, um, but uh, it's good to hear a a uh, another English accent uh, sort of talking <laughs> about PR for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's. A, we were just saying we're from here. the same county in uh, in England, so that's uh, it's a small world. Yeah, absolutely. No, I've been in New York now for oh, clo close to 11 years, be 11 years in a, in a week's time. Um, and hopefully I haven't lost the accent too much. My family say that I have, but uh, people over here tend to say the opposite. So it's I guess we can the audience judge that one. <laughs> it's all we've got over here. He's got to keep the accent. So, But let's talk about the sector because, look, we've seen um, the rise of big players. We've seen the rise of Cision snapping up lots of companies. We've seen the growth of Meltwater. We've seen sort of rumors about maybe a merger last year, and then uh, Meltwater went public on the uh, uh, stock exchange in, in Scandinavia. Um, and then we're seeing other rumor stories, to be fair, about you know maybe Cision's going to hive off its PR newswire mm -hmm. when they were making a big play of having a, a, a sort of comms tech cloud, a bit like Adobe and Oracle, and that yeah. wouldn't seem to be on, on track with that. So tell us what this, it's obviously a hot market, but and I think every PR pro knows that the comms tech plays a much bigger part in what they do. But what's your, you, what's your reflection on that? You became CEO reasonably recently, but you've been in the company for 15 years. So you've got a terrific perspective on the market. Tell us tell us where you think we're at. Yeah, I saw it. I became the, the CEO for Meltwater in November of last year. So it's been a fairly crazy last six to 12 months with the the pandemic um i had my first uh child uh in june wow. of last year as well so i had a a baby girl she'll be one of those covid uh covid babies Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much um i became the the ceo in november of last year as said and, and very quickly we actually listed the company on the stock exchange in in norway so it's most certainly been a, a whirlwind um with regard to founder for those who don't know is norwegian yeah yeah, exactly. So this is actually our 20 year anniversary in operation this year. So we were founded in, in Oslo, Norway, back in 2001. Um, and so the listing, if you like, is kind of going full circle uh, by listing the company publicly in uh, in Oslo. And I have to say, we're really happy with how that whole process has gone. Uh, I think we've been able to attract some really fantastic uh, investors that will enable us to really focus on growth uh, moving forward. And that's really both organic and inorganic. Um, so we'll be investing a lot back into our product and R&D uh, this year from an organic perspective. And also going to focus a lot on M&A. Um, and actually, last week, we announced the acquisition of, uh, of Linkfluence, which is a French-based right. social listing player, which you know perhaps we'll come back to. I think in terms of that, the comms tech space uh, and the industry which we're in, we were obviously chatting a little bit before coming online here, Steve. It, it's changed a lot in the 15 years that I've been uh, with Meltwater. Um, and I believe that the rise of social media is a huge factor in that. I mean, when I started with the company back in 2006, you know, Facebook and Twitter, they were either not founded yet or something that the kids in university and college would play nice, around. In their nascent period, for sure. It, exactly. Um, and they today are business critical for most companies, if not all companies that are out there. So one trend that we certainly have identified over the last few years in, in the industry is that kind of coming together of social and news. Um, I think the idea that social listening is not a part of media intelligence is perhaps becoming a little bit outdated. Uh, you have to be in the social listening game these days. Uh, and a lot of what we've been trying to do is if you like, break down those barriers or the silos between public relations uh, and marketing and build this kind of all in one platform, which encompasses editorial news content, as well as social media. Um, and that's a trend that we see really across the industry. You know, you've got a lot of 
players in the more who are more traditionally socially focused that are talking about news content more than they were a few years ago. And then, as you mentioned, there's been a lot of activity in our space with regards to M&A and consolidation that is looking to bring those two things a lot closer together. And maybe that GameStop and Reddit saga, uh, which I'm sure you're familiar with, I, I think I saw an article that you published about the topic. That was really good, a really good proof point uh, from my perspective. That's an issue that really rose on Reddit, then got into other social networks and then became mainstream media after that. And if you look at the impact that that had on business and on share price and valuation of companies, you can really see the interplay of social media and news content and how it doesn't matter today where it breaks first. And that's why from a product perspective, I think you see the coming together of those two things. You know, in terms yeah, there's of- our There's conversations going on about your brands, whether you like it or not, and, and in exactly. places where you probably didn't used to hang out. I mean, look, we've seen the rise of the audio social networks, for example, Clubhouse and Twitter Spaces and others. Yeah. And you mentioned Reddit, and there's plenty of other places and brands and companies and the agencies that partner with them have to be aware of these and have to be on board with them. And it seems like they weren't uh, enough with the with the GameStop thing. Yeah, I, I would most certainly say that's uh, that's the case. And it doesn't matter, as said, where the conversation begins. You, you need to be aware of the fact that it's that it's happening. Right. And over the course of the next 12 to 24 months, who knows what the next big social network channel or outlet will be? We've seen Parler kind of rise and fall. Clubhouse is the one that's most certainly coming around now. But I'm sure there will be more uh, and there'll be different networks that kind of come to fruition throughout the course of the next 12 to 24 months. And for us, we need to stay on top of that uh, as a company, make sure we're able to get hold of that data to our customers, right? I was going to say, do you have tools for audio social networks or are you developing them? How, how do you stand on that? We do, we do a lot with podcasts uh, already today. Um, and Linkfluence, the company I mentioned that we acquired out of France, they're doing some stuff on, on Twitch, uh, which is, of course, for, particularly in the gaming sector, has been an Another important... Another fantastically influential channel. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And one that I'm sure more businesses will be looking to stay on top of moving forward. So we're already doing some work in that, in that space. And I think that video, audio-based social content will become more and more important as we move forward. So are those the sort of areas you're looking at for M&A? And uh, is most of that activity in the US or are you seeing you, you've just bought in Europe? Is it really whoever's got the best tech and the best ideas that you're looking for? I, I would say so. I mean, the, the first thing we look for is actually culture. Uh, you know, from a company perspective, we talk a lot internally uh, about culture and that has to ring true when it comes to M&A as well. So we're looking for not just good products or an interesting space and a big total addressable market, but teams of people that have an aligned vision with us um, and a good culture fit between the two organizations. And I certainly believe we found that with Linkfluence. Um, they're a great company. They're based out of France. They have some really strong customers, the likes of Nike and Danone and Toyota, for example. I think what they do really well is using AI to mine social media and use that to extract consumer insight. And I think they do a really good job when it comes to helping customers understand the voice of the customer with things like review tracking and review analytics as well. In terms of you know, future M&A that we'll look to do outside of the culture fit, I think what we're really looking for are companies that can add a new use case or product functionality to what we already offer. And it should always kind of cycle back to that one integrated platform that we look to offer up to our customers. Yeah, tell me a bit about that, because we saw decisions made, I don't know, 14 acquisitions in a few years. It must be very difficult to integrate all those different companies and cultures into your organization and come out with a co cohesive, uh, not one stop shop, but at least an integrated platform. So how do you do that? And what are the biggest challenges of doing that when you make acquisitions like that? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. Um, you might be familiar with the fact that we acquired uh, Sysimos back in 2018. Absolutely, yeah. So they were one of the earliest entrants, if you like, into the world of social media analytics and listening and social media management. Um, and I was quite heavily involved with both the acquisition of the company and then the subsequent integration. But for us, whenever we are acquiring companies, we have to find a way to integrate the product into our current platform and make sure that we do offer that one-stop shop. 
And I think from there, it's really about making sure you don't develop those products in isolation. So if you look at historically, we've been doing media monitoring and media intelligence. We've had the, the media contacts and the journalist outreach parts of the product. And then via that Sysmos acquisition, we've added the social listening and the social media management. So we want to work on all of those different elements of the product, but then tie them together. I think that's where we can provide a really good customer experience. So, you know, if you see a piece of content at any part or any point of our product, you should be able to publish that to social using the social media management elements. And I think the interplay between those different tools is going to be really key. And I think journalists on social media, that's another really interesting thing that we're looking at right now. So helping our customers identify journalists, not via a, a beat search or what they're writing about in the media, but actually finding them on Twitter or finding them on Reddit, and then using that to help them better understand those journalists that they want to build a relationship with and ultimately you know, do some good outreach with, right? That's a good point because journalists are now, now personal brands. Well, I guess they are, but they're, you can't just say, well, their social media is divorced from their coverage. They, they're, they're part of the same thing, and they're representing their title when they're on social. I mean, and we've had seen lots of debates about that and how they should probably be a bit more nonpartisan in certain cases. But, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, so we've seen stories about, for example, Intrado putting Notified on the market. Is that something you'd be interested in having a look at? It's not the type of acquisition that we're really focused on right now. Um, I think the acquisitions that we will be doing are more so going to be in the social media space. Uh, I think that's where we've really heavily invested uh, over the last few years, really off the rise of social media uh, in the industry with the subsequent acquisition of Sysmos, and then more recently uh, with, with Linkfluence just last week. So we'll be looking to add new companies that more so focus on different use cases in social media. And there's a lot of interesting ones that we could look to explore. It could be with regards to customer care, uh, just as one example, and helping customers find, you know, not just complaints, of course, which is typically what people think about when it comes to customer care, but new business opportunities and sales leads as well. That's, that's one area that we could look at. Um, social commerce, I think, is another really interesting space. And then influencer marketing. Um, we've done a little bit in that space already, but that's certainly an area that I would imagine is a very natural fit for us to explore moving forward. Yeah, and let's finish by talking about uh, one of my favorite topics, chess. Uh, I know you're not a chess nerd, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> and Meltwater has been uh, sponsoring the uh, Magnus Chess Tour. And yeah. the Meltwater Chess Classic, a really high profile series of tournaments that's carrying on throughout this year. And I think it's going to culminate in San Francisco later this year, hopefully in yeah. person, but we'll see. Um, talk to us about that, about the partnership. And um, I think your founder is a chess fan, so and he's Norwegian, and the, the Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, is Norwegian. So I see this set, the, uh, the partnership uh, logic there. And I guess data is, is, is a big chess thing as well, isn't it? And preparation and research. So talk yeah. to us just a little bit about that partnership to finish. And I think that's where we see the parallels uh, between chess and, and what it is that we do. It's, it's based a lot on data and you understanding that data to make your next move. And, and that's where there is a very natural, as said, parallel between the type of service we offer to our clients as well as, as well as chess. Perhaps next time we can talk about soccer or, or football to you and I. That that's an area that I'm a little bit more personally interested in. Uh, don't um, worry, I'm, I'm into my football as well. As okay, as as, as most uh, people in Kent, I'm a Manchester United supporter. <laughs> Gillingham is the only. Well, this is really in the weeds, but Gillingham is the only British professional football club in Kent. So that was a bit out of my uh, comfort zone. <laughs> I think I think you were brought up a bit closer, weren't you? I was very, very close to there. Um, I'm not going to tell you which team it is I follow. It's a little bit too embarrassing for me right now uh, to talk about cool, that. It? Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's Tottenham, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Is, well, that's just, right. just as bad, but a little bit closer <laughs> to Ken, at least, Steve. Um, <laughs> no, with regards to the chess, I mean, like everyone else in the world, I guess during lockdown, I've been watching Queen's Gambit, which I thought was a, a fantastic series. I did used to play a little bit as a, as a kid as well. Um, and despite the fact that I'm not by any stretch um, a chess aficionado or, or nerd, as you said, I've most certainly heard of Magnus. Um, you know, we're yeah, as, he's crossed as, over, hasn't he? Exactly. And as you said before, I mean, we're a Norwegian company. The listing was full circle. 
And in the same regard, this partnership is, is a little bit the same. And having worked for a Norwegian company for such a long stretch of time, I do keep an eye on all things Norwegian. Um, and Magnus has been an absolute prodigy from what I understand. And again, I'm sure you understand better. So in January, we launched a partnership with Magnus, uh, as you know, world chess champion and has been a grandmaster for, for some time. Um, and we became the, the title sponsor of the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour, which is this online chess tournament where the best players of the world in the world are playing online together. And the tour has broken a lot of records when it comes to viewership and online impressions and all of that good stuff. So moving forward, as said, you know, the, the final is hopefully going to be in San Francisco uh, in person. And with a little bit of luck, Steve, we'll get the chance to meet there face to face. I would love that. That would be fantastic. Yeah, really good. So thank you for your support of that. But yeah, Magnus, he, he, he can't walk down the streets in Norway, believe it or not, as a chess player. And then you've got the Queen's Gambit, like you said, and Hikaru Nakamura, the American uh, multiple American champion has crossed over to into the esports world. So it has been hot during lockdown for sure. Yeah. John, it was great to catch up, talk about um, football and chess, but mainly about the comms tech market and uh, really great to catch up. Looking forward to seeing how you uh, carry on at uh, Meltwater as CEO. So thanks for joining us on Coffee, Coffee Break. Appreciate it, Steve. Hope to speak soon. Cheers.